Hey everyone, my name is Christine Javier and today I am going to go over how to reverse a string with a more optimized solution in mind. And this is a play off my first um, reverse string solution. All right, so let's start off by opening our JS file. Okay, now let's uh, declare a function called reverse string. And reverse string is gonna take an input of a string of any length um, and let's just write the return statement now. So the first thing you want to do in manipulating a string is to transform it into an array. And in trans by transforming it into an array, we could tackle every character in that string and change it somehow. So you do that by using the split method. All right, now let's console.log stuff as we go along. Um, let's use an argument of hello. I'm going to run this. And as you'd expect, um, hello is broken up into pieces and has been transformed into an array. Now, the next thing you want to do is make a for loop so that we could um, encounter every element of the array and change it somehow. Now, this line here is the reason why this solution is more optimized than my previous one. And it's due to this right here. I am only going to iterate through half of the string length. And I'm going to elaborate why I'm doing that later on. Um, for now, I want to provide you with some insight about why I'm approaching my, pro uh, approaching my solution like this. And I am going to do so by providing what some of you will probably find ridiculous, um, a metaphor. And because, you know, personally, I like to learn new concepts with really silly, relatable metaphors. So let's say uh, you want to eat a taco and you're making a taco. So your goal here is to not only make a delicious taco, but to also avoid spillage. How would you do that? How would you possibly eat this thing without avoiding or with, by, with avoiding um, the spillage. So you are going to fold that taco in half and make sure that the fillings are held in place. So by folding it in half, what's essentially happening is two ends are meeting, two corresponding ends. Um, and you could apply this to the length of the taco at any point, but we're just focusing on this line right here and you could see this point here matches with that point, and that point matches with that point. And at the center, um, you see that it matches with itself. And this concept is integral not only to making the most awesome uh, non-spilling tacos ever, but also to my solution. So let's keep that in mind as I explain further and in more depth. So let's say this array is my taco. I am not going to fold this array in half, but I'm going to think of it kind of like that. Um, what I'm trying to do here is identify one part of my array taco and match it with its counterpart. So the, the H here at the beginning, the very first part of the array, matches with the end part here, with the O. With that thinking, the second part of the array matches with the second to the last part of the array. And much like the very center of a taco, it kind of just folds on itself and matches with itself. Now, this is the key core concept to how I'm attempting this problem here. And with that general concept in mind, more specifically, what I'm going to try doing is assign the beginning value with its end value and vice versa. Assign the end value with its beginning value and so forth. Okay, so there's a, a relationship we must establish, which is how do I identify, how do we configure that matchiness. So given that, how do we define its end part? STRI at I equals zero equals H. Now let's quantify its relationship to O. In order to do so, let's identify the end of the string. So string.length um, minus one. Um, let me quickly go over that. So there's a discrepancy between the way elements of an array are uh, counted versus the actual length. So with length, you always count from one. So one, 
at h, 2 at e, so forth, 3, 4, 5. The length of hello is 5. However, um, the elements are counted differently. You always count from 0. So h is at position 0, e is at position 1, and so forth. So subtracting 1 from the length reconciles that difference. Now, this is the kicker here. Let's subtract i. So again, at i equals 0, str i equals h, and then str, I, str length 5 minus 1, 4. We're at 0 now, or at, at the o here. Minus i, which equals 0. We're going to remain here. Therefore, we've established the relationship between h and o. Now let's go see if we could if this holds true for all the other elements. Um, at str i, where i equals one, that will equal e. Now str dot length five minus one, we're at four here. Minus i, i equals one, so we're at the l. L matches with e. Now with here str i equals two, we're at the l here. And let's do str dot length, which is five minus 1 equals 4, minus 2, 1, 2. L matches with itself. So this relationship is accurate. Now, let's code it out. Let's code it out such that we just swap uh, the matching counterparts with each other. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is create a placeholder value of, a placeholder variable, I should say, of stri. And I'll go over in a bit why we need to make a placeholder variable. Um, let's declare something called end of string, which will equal that end part relationship, minus 1, minus i. Now, this is where the placeholder becomes important. STRi will now be overwritten by the value at its corresponding end. And we need that placeholder because we need to remember what was in the beginning of the string so that we could apply it to the end of the string. str end of string now equals that beginning part placeholder. Good. Um, so we've established that relationship. These few lines of code have uh, resulted in um, swapping the corresponding values. Um, so we're still stuck in an array. Let's go outside the for loop and let's turn it back into a string. And you do that by something called the join method. All right, so let's run this. And as we'd expect, we've reversed the string, which is great. Um, now let's go over why this solution is more optimal than my previous solution. It's because of this here. Um, so let me run this again with that initial array we made in mind. All right, let's talk about how this works by just iterating through half of the string length. Um, and this has to do with our taco metaphor again. <laughs> so let's consider half of the taco. This is kind of like, consider this left part of the taco as the left of, as the part of the strings that we're iterating through. So because we know this end part here of the taco, and because we've established how to know the relationship um, we've established the relationship of its counterpart and we know how to figure out exactly where it would land here when folded, uh, we could just kind of disregard what these values are and just say, hey, whatever is at its core, um, whatever is at the corresponding end of this end of the tortilla, let's just swap those values, you know? And same here, whatever corresponds on the opposite end of this tortilla, let's just reassign um, those values. So you don't literally need to know what those values are. We just need to know where, where those positions are and just say, hey, um, whatever value is at that position, let's just grab that value and reassign it to its corresponding position. And that's basically the gist of it. So we could just ignore half and just know its position and reassign it there. Um, and that's why my solution is more optimal because if you consider a string length of 10, you know, you don't have to iterate through just half. Like, it's kind of negligible, like, whether or not you iterate through the entire thing or not. But consider a string length of, let's say, 10,000 characters. You don't want to iterate through 10,000 characters. You want to iterate through much less than that um, so that the runtime's faster. And by cutting the string length in half, 
you accomplish that. Anyhow, so that's uh, the thinking behind this solution here. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know via comments or whatever. Um, I hope that this helped you and, and will help you in the future when, you're, when you need to reverse any string that needs reversing in your life. And also, I hope that you buy some tacos today because now I want some tacos and I think that would be a great idea when coding. <laughs> All right. Have a good day.